That's right, Alex. This is this is a concerning uh, piece of news. Uh, apparently, uh, Thomas Crooks flew a drone, a commercially available drone, over the site, uh, which perhaps could have helped him plan his uh, attack. Uh, now, it's not clear if uh, drones and aircraft were banned or prohibited over the site, which is often the case. Our guests can clarify that further. So we don't know if it somehow violated a ban over there. But they do now believe that he flew this drone over the site. And then c combine that with the fact that he also, uh, they've also looked at his phone now. The investigators have been able to search through all sorts of links on his phone. And that does not still provide a motive. The motive is still something elusive. But investigators did see that he searched uh, information about the mass school shooting in Michigan at Oxford High School that a mm. teenager carried out there, as we all know. Ethan Crowley, uh, He yep. also was... And he, right, and he also did research on explosive materials, devices, uh, improvised explosive devices. Um, so more details emerging here and more questions really unanswered about the security uh, for, for that rally. So, Charles, first question to you then would be, uh, was airspace, airspace restricted? I mean, Dan's right. I'm sure you're very familiar that typically it would be. Yes, airspace is restricted depending on the timing of when this drone was being used to surveil the uh, the property and the event location. That will come into play. But yes, the airspace is always closed via a temporary flight restricted zone anywhere that the president goes. Look, the Secret Service owns us. They're responsible for the creation of the overall security plan and the effective implementation of such. That includes the use of state and local law enforcement to support those operations as they do all around the world. And I think what you're gonna see on Monday with this testimony of the director in front of the House Oversight Committee is that there's gonna be a lot of areas covered. That's going to include hiring, are the standards being maintained, training, and operational aspects, both resources and the use of technology. Look, it's hmm. 2024. If you're not keeping up with technologies like drones and drone detection, then you're going to lose the game. The Secret Service has got to be resourced the way it needs to be by the Department of Homeland Security. And after 22 years since joining the department and being absorbed into DHS, I think we need to ask some hard questions. Does the Secret Service belong within the Department of Homeland Security? As every year they're fighting for the resources that they need as they go up against agencies like the Coast Guard who are looking to purchase ships, CBP, uh, looking to buy helicopters. I mean, this is a real question that needs to be had. And of course, is the right leadership in place right now at the Secret Service to make sure that they come out of this stronger? And listen, Dan, I know that you have reported you're familiar with what went down nine years ago when there was a report issued that brings into question those things that Charles is mentioning. Talk about that. That's right. These are not new questions. And really, uh, it, you have to ask yourself why these questions and these concerns weren't addressed long ago, right? So uh, nine years ago, Congress issued a report on the Secret Service saying it was an agency in crisis. And that report was prompted by some incidents that were very worrisome, including uh, someone simply scaling the White House fence and strolling across the lawn and walking into the White House. Um, so uh, that report said that one of the issues uh, which we're covering here is training and a chronic shortage of, of personnel. Uh, the core mission, uh, according to a lot of folks who used to work at the Secret Service and, and, and others who've studied this, has, has been chronically short of agents. And so when you have, don't have enough people, you don't have the, the space and the breathing room to train them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this really dates back, according to some accounts, to the 1990s. Because hmm. the idea wow. was you would sort of be on shift, right? You'd be on shift for six weeks or so, and then you would have two weeks of training to keep everyone fresh and up to date. And they have not, that train, you know, training often gets sacrificed when you're shorthanded. So that is one of the big issues here.
Hmm. Um, Josh, my director, I want you to put back up right now that photo that we have of the stage and in context to the complex of warehouses. Perfect. We've got that one and another one. Um, and this is to you, Charles, because this is what Congress is looking into, right? These warehouses to the north of the stage, which were excluded from the security perimeter, despite that closest one being, of course, within rifle range, as we saw. The Secret Service has also been criticized for how long it took to get Trump off stage. Overall, was this a blatant failure of security protocols? I'm curious your assessment of how the Secret Service handled uh, that day before and then immediately after the shots were fired. Thanks, Alex. Look, I think this has also been part of the messaging problem, the limited messaging problem that we've heard come at, coming out of the Secret Service. That is part of the responsibility of the Secret Service. That is part of the operational security plan. There are three concentric rings of security, the inner, middle, and outer perimeters. Just because state and local law enforcement is, is in the outer perimeter and we're given the task, according to the Secret Service, of securing that building, it's the job of the Secret Service to make sure that that building is being taken out of play. By that, I mean that it no longer represents a risk. The Secret Service sends people out in advance to identify these types of threats and come up with plans to mitigate them. There is no way as a Secret Service agent that you go out to that site in advance and stand on that stage and see that building and not view it as the threat that it is and that it was that day. So, you know, this is messaging. The Secret Service, if the buck is going to stop with them, as the director said, then you've got to own this. And the yeah. fact is, nobody that's been with the agency in their right mind is, is going to tell you that that building did not fall into the overall security plan of Indeed. the Secret Service. All right, Charles and Dan, gentlemen, thank you so much.